Campbell and it's Mr. B. In this video, we're going to be talking about uh, integer addition using counters. Now, I know this isn't your textbook, so just relax and we'll get to it right now. Okay? So the first thing we want to do is identify what we're dealing with here. Imagine temperature outside, hot, red, cold, blue, cold, blue, hot, red. Yes, that's right. So we can think of it like that. One counter that is red would be positive one, hot. One counter that is blue is negative one. When you turn the hot and the cold on together, the hotness cancels out the coldness. They nullify each other. They zero each other out. That's what we're looking at here. But, so what that would look like mathematically using counters is like this. If I had this combined with this, don't forget, combined with is the plus sign. We have negative one combined with, see the last video, positive one. And we know already that that is going to equal zero. They zero each other out. Why? Because negative one is the opposite of positive one. Okay. Similarly, if we had counters that look like this and said combine them together, we would say we could write it mathematically like negative two combined with positive two equals zero. And why is that, of course? Because this one cancels out with this one, and this one cancels out with this one. So all we have to remember is that if you have one, if you're combining a positive and a negative counter, the net value of them, the net value of the negative and the positive together is zero. Okay? If I had ten red ones and ten blue ones, the net value of those would be zero again. Exactly zero. So we can show the number of zero the number zero in many different ways. Here's another way. Watch this. If we have this, what do we have? We have negative 3, and we have positive 3. When you put them all together, this cancels with this, this cancels with this, and this cancels with this. Guess what? There's zero counters left on the board. It's that easy. It is really that easy. Now I'm going to go through an example that will show us how we can use counters while adding integers together. Okay? So let's just look at this here. If I had something, a uh, basic statement, let's say negative 3 plus positive 5. All I need to do is represent these with our, what do you call these things? Counters. All that I need to do is represent these things with their counters. It's just this easy. So here's exactly what I have. Negative 3 combined with positive 5. All I'm concerned about now is what can I cancel out? That's what I love about math. All we're concerned about is making it simple. What can I cancel out of here? I see three blues. That means I can cancel out three reds. Does it matter which three? Not at all. All I know is that I've got two reds left, and red, each red is a positive one. Therefore, my answer, I know, must be a positive two. Just that simple. Next example. All right, here's our next example. What if we're given something like this, and it says complete, or something crazy like that? We need to first be able to identify what exactly we're dealing with. Well, since blue is negative 1, we know that this here is negative 6. And red is positive 1, this here is positive 4. So we should start in our notebooks by writing down what we have. We always want to start with the facts. And that's what we're going to deal with here. Negative 6, and this is positive 4. Now, it depends what the question's asking you to do. At this stage in the game, we're talking about adding integers, so I'm going to put that, the add or the combined with symbol there. We're still talking about adding integers, and that's what we're going to do here. So when we add, we bring them all together into one big mixing bowl here, and we just match them up, one, two, three, just like that. One, gone. Two, gone. Three, gone. Four, gone. All that's left is two. Two what? Two of the negative one counters in total equals negative two left over. Again, when we add or combine with counters, our goal is to cancel them out. It's the greatest thing ever. It makes it so easy. So now that the idea of integer addition is in the bag, of course, and you can always hit rewind if you need, we're going to talk about an integer subtraction. Now this might be a little more tricky at first, the way it appears, but just relax, and I'll explain it all very very straightforwardly for you. Subtraction. We'll start with what we know. Subtraction, when you think subtraction, I hope that you think about 
this sign, it looks like this. It's minus, a negative sign. Okay? This is, it has three ways of being read, so just be aware of that in the terminology. What we need to think about when we see a negative is the word reversal. And here's, here's what I'm talking about. You know that if I have positive 5 combined with positive 1, our answer is larger than what we started with. Our answer is 6, positive 6. Okay? But if you started with $5 and then you gave away a loony, or a gave away dollar, so we're going to combine it with giving away, oops, I got lazy, we to start with $5, combine it with the event of giving away $1. So if you start with the value of $5, and then you combine it with the event of giving away $1, you know you're going to have less than 5 bucks. You're going to have 4 bucks. So let's think about that. Well, we know it's 4, positive, but the relationship went down. Now, what's the reversal of up? The reversal of up is down. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. When we insert a negative sign into the action, then it reverses our direction. Okay, that is the golden rule. Let's think about this again. Here we have a starting point. We have a starting point. From our starting point, something's got to happen. We call it the action. So from here to here is our action. Note very carefully, when in our action here, here, we had positive and a positive, our action went up. Our action was positive. Okay? In other words, there's no reversals. So if I'm walking, I'm not reversing my direction, I'm still going the same way that I'm walking. But if I have a reversal introduced in my action, so I have my starting point, let's say my starting point is walking, and I have a reversal, I suddenly have to go the opposite direction. Okay, so I'm going left. This is the way to the negative. Now think about this, reversal. If I had positive 5 subtract negative 1, dun dun dun, don't worry. In our action, we have two reversals. Watch what happens when I try this out. Walking, walking, walking. Oh, reversal number one, reversal number two, and here I go. I am ending up going the same direction that I started with, which is exactly the same as this. So when you see this, what you need to automatically think is, wait a second. That is the same as, the same as, this. The same as this. So when you see a negative and a negative, I want you to think two reversals, if they undo each other, because when you reverse once and then reverse again, you're back where you started from. I'm going to sum this up right here. If we add a positive, there's no reversals introduced, so we remain going positive. Second case, we add a negative, one reversal. Therefore, instead of continuing positively, we have to reverse our way and go negative. Likewise, if we were to subtract a positive, we didn't really talk about this much, but what you need to recognize is that there's one reversal. So, we always have our starting point, and one reversal means we're going the opposite direction, again. And then, of course, the last case, which we did talk about subtracting a negative, we're talking about two reversals. Therefore, you're going to go in the same direction which you started with. Now, I had a student ask me, what if there was three reversals? What would happen? I said, hang on, this point will actually come clear when we summarize this in some way. So let's summarize this here. What do I notice about when it's positive? Positive versus negative. Uh, there's a little detail that's very important. 
It's like this. Positive. You go up. That means your answer will be larger than what you started with. Clear? Your answer will be larger than what you started with when you have... How many negatives are in there? Zero. How many negatives are here? Two. Zero and two are even numbers. You, you go up. So the statement is, your answer will go up from your starting point when there's an even number of negative signs. That's the core of this. Let's look at these. How many negative signs? One. How many negative signs? One. When the, and one is an odd number. So between even and odd, we've really encompassed everything. So similarly, you go down when there's an odd number of negative signs. I know my notes are a little sloppy, just forgive me. It's all I'm going to ask. Forgive me. So with this pattern, we can look at an example like this. We know that positive 3 plus positive 1 equals 4. We go up, because there's an even number of negative signs, 0. There's 0 negative signs. So we know that's positive 4. However, if I had positive 3 plus negative 1, we have an odd number of negative signs, so we go down. If I had positive 3 minus negative 1, there's an even number of negative signs again, so we should go up. Very important line. And finally, if I had this minus a positive 1, again, just look, an odd number in the action. It's all in the action side, in the action, ignoring our starting point. Interaction, there is an odd number of negative signs, therefore we're going to go down. It's just like this. One negative, two negatives, three negatives, four negatives, back to where we started from. Five negatives, six negatives, seven, eight, nine, ten negatives. Even number of negatives, even number of negatives, you get the exact same point of where you started with. Every time I flipped, I, every time I reversed, every time I reversed the light switch, every second time I reversed the light switch, I was back where I started from. One reversal, lights off. Two reversal, lights on. Three reversal, lights off. Four reversals, lights on, and so on. So what happens when there are three reversal signs? Let's just check it out again. If we had some starting point and then an odd number of negative signs, such as three, Suppose we had a question like this, positive 3, subtract, subtract, negative 1. Then what? Do we go up or down? Will we end up higher or lower than what we started with? All we need to remember is that for every even amount of negative signs, they cancel out and they might as well be positive. So really, we could just do that and it would be the same thing. Because when you add a positive or subtract a negative, there's an even number of negative signs your answer is going to be higher than what you started with. So we just take care of that to uh, simplify things. Do we need to show add, add? Do we need to show that anyway? Of course we don't. We can get rid of one of those, doesn't matter. We're stuck with this one single negative sign. And when you have one, you recognize that it's an odd number. It's an odd number, and because it's an odd number, you know that your result will be lower than what you started with. We go down one to positive two. Anyway, that's how that works. If you have any questions or anything, just let me know. I'd love to help you.